many of you don't know, but in 2000 and 2001, 2002, I stopped acting. I left the industry. I moved to London because it was a very dark period in my life. Like I said, I had these issues and, you know, I just fell out with some friends. I considered family and I just gave up acting for a while. I needed to get out of, you know, just leave that space for, for a minute. And then I moved to London and I gave up stardom and then you won't believe it. This is something I've never told people before. But while in London, I was trying to make ends meet. I started working in a care home as a caregiver for adults with special needs. May God bless this beautiful lady. Our popular Nollywood actress, one of my favorites, known as Rita Dominic Anosike. Hmm, where do I start from? Before I let you guys see this video, I just want to say something. Um, the purpose of me bringing this video to you guys today is to motivate someone out there, to encourage someone out there, to let you know that, you know, for every difficulty you are facing at the moment, indeed, there is light at the end of the tunnel. This is a popular, very famous Nollywood actress. According to her, she gave up stardom. She didn't even mind, care what people, you know, talk about her. She went to London after she had problems with some of her friends in the industry. Friends that she considered family, she was betrayed, according to her, she was backstabbed. She decided to move to London. While in London, you guys know how it is here in the UK. You can't just come to UK and then you see money on the floor or you see somebody that will ask and feed you for probably one, two, three, four months. So she decided to go into care job. She did it very well. I will let you guys hear the rest of the video from her. I just want to say this again, please. I know we have a lot of people who recently relocated to the UK and it's not really rosy for some of them out there. If you happen to be one of those persons that are in the UK, um, who relocated to the UK recently, and then you are having one challenges probably with your COS, your visa, whatever challenges you are facing, know that there's light at the end of the tunnel know that god will surely see you through and i want you to know that whatever difficulty you are passing through today believe me some of us we've been there before and we came out strong i'll let you guys hear the rest of the video should in case you are meeting me for the first time my name is joanne and i'm based here in england on this channel i talk about life realities of africans Nigerians that are based in the UK and other parts of the world. So if content like this interests you, please subscribe to the channel and also click on the like video of this, um, the like button of this very video. And for my returning subscribers, one love keep us together. Let's hear what Rita Dominic, you know, has for every one of us. Thank you very much. While some might view it as a step down, I don't. This is taking care of others brought me joy and purpose at the time I needed it most. Because remember, I took care of my mother and my father when they were ill, because I was alone with them. And when I say taking care of, I'm talking about really taking care of. Because you see, um, when you get really ill, it's sometimes becoming continent. So I took care of them at that level. So it was a no-brainer for me. My mother, my rock, my support system,
I mean, she was part of this process, you know. She made sure each time I go to school and come back, I'll do my homework, and then she'll prepare me for um, children's rights programs where I go to perform during the weekends. So she was very, very instrumental to what, who I am today, you know. And then um, after that, I was in a bad place. I felt like there was no reason to keep going on, you know. I remember being on the plane, going back to Lagos after she had passed, but she passed in my state where I'm from, in most states. And then we had to go to Lagos and, you know, get necessary things to come back and plan the burial. Now, I remember being on that plane, and to be honest, it was such a turbulent thought, but I did not fear it because I wanted it to crash. I wanted, I was praying that I want this plane to crash and I can see my mother and be with my mother again. That's how I felt, you know? And then that's still, the, it's, it's a very empty feeling anyway. Now you see, I'm the youngest in my family, and while I was in secondary school, my older siblings had all moved back to the UK because we're all born there. was only one born in Nigeria anyway. That's right. That's a story for another day, <laughs> you know. After our mother's funeral, we all returned back to their lives abroad. Then life for me took a turn for the worst, both emotionally and financially. My father's health declined because, you know, when a couple, you know, when they're very close and one dies, it affects the other one. I think my father actually stopped living with him and mother died, you know. So he became ill, his health declined, and then, yeah, my siblings wanted to move back to the UK, and I was now all in in Nigeria. I found myself losing faith in the slow growth of Nollywood, waiting months between jobs, felt like, and eternity. And then I lost some people who I think I thought were friends. Very close friends. In fact, some friends I considered family. It was just a very turbulent time in my life. I don't want to dwell too much on that step period, but it led me to hitting rock bottom in Lagos. And when I say rock bottom, I mean rock bottom. I became homeless. I was squatting with people for a stretch. And when I say supporting, I'm talking about three, four people in the room. It was a friend's space, and I was staying there, you know. Um, choose your friends wisely is one advice I always give to young girls in the industry. It's very important to choose who you, you know, there's something that I said, choose your friends. It is very important to have friends who share the same vision goals with you, you know. People who know your visions are aligned. And people who bring the very good energy because look, the sort of energy you put out in the universe is the sort of energy you receive. That's something that always helps you. So you have to be very careful the sort of energy you surround yourself with and also the sort of energy you're putting out there in the universe. Well, eventually, my siblings found a way to get me out of Nigeria. Um, then I lived with my brother and his family for a while in London. And gradually, you know, so getting myself together. Now, during that process, I put my dreams of stardom on hold. Many of you don't know, but in 2000, 2001, 2002, I stopped acting, I left the industry. I moved to London because it was a very dark period of my life. Like I said, I had these issues of, you know, I just fell out with some friends, I considered family, and I just gave up acting for a while. I needed to get out of, you know, just leave that space for, for a minute. And then I moved to London and I gave up stardom. And then, you won't believe it. This is something I've never told people before. But while in London, I was trying to make ends meet, I started working in a care home as a caregiver for adults with special needs. While some of my views as a step down, I don't. It's taking care of others brought me joy and purpose at the time I needed it most. Because remember, I took care of my mother and my brother when we were here. Because I was alone with them. And when I say taking care of, I'm talking about really taking care of. Because you see, um, when you get really ill, it's sometimes become incontinent. So I took care of them at that level. So it was a no for me. Okay, first of all, 2003, I saved. You know, some money to return to Nigeria to get my stuff and just finally move, you know, just move relocate to, to London. Nollywood was now beginning to thrive. 
in fact, we're now calling it not even we used to call it Africa, the Africa film industry or the Nigeria film industry at the time. And then so when the producers were urging me to stay, I felt it was risky, I felt it was my job. I also had started a, a drama school in London. You know, I had just paid the fees before I came to Nigeria holiday. You know, right before I went to Nigeria holiday, I keep thinking I'm in Nigeria, you know, and then um, one day, Genevieve Nunachi calls me. You all know Genevieve, right? Yes! <laughs> you know, so Jenny calls me a few days before I was to go back to London, and she said, Oh, I've given you a number to a police officer. And I'm like, ah, You know, I'm going back. And she's like, Well, just listen to what I have to say. She was one of the people that advised me to stay, actually, to say that I'm going back to London. 